Hey everyone, it's Lil Kev, and welcome to my gauntlet guide. If you just want info on the recent updates, I reviewed them in my most recent video, which will be linked. This guide will cover both the normal gauntlet and the corrupted gauntlet, as the mechanics are the same. The corrupted gauntlet is just a hard mode with stronger monsters and less time to complete it. For those new to the gauntlet, it's a minigame found in Northwest Preptinus that is accessible as soon as you complete the Song of the Elves quest. There are no other requirements beyond what is needed for that quest. You can get here easily with a spirit tree, POH portal, or teleport crystal. The general concept of the minigame is while on a timer, you gather resources in various rooms, make gear and other supplies, all in order to defeat the final boss, the Hunluf. As far as recommended stats go, I put base 80 combat stats and level 70 prayer for piety as a minimum for the normal gauntlet. If you can get 77 prayer for rigor and augury, that's an added benefit, but you can definitely get by without them. For the corrupted gauntlet, I recommend having base 90 combat stats and 77 prayer. Rigor and Augury is huge here, as the Corrupted Hunleth can be extremely challenging without these prayers. In the lobby area of the Gauntlet, you'll find the NPC Bryn who must be spoken to before entering the Gauntlet for the first time, a bank deposit box, a scoreboard, and the reward chest. Players can open the reward chest upon completing the Gauntlet. The average loot when the Hunleth is defeated is quite high, and the rare big ticket items include Elite Clue Scrolls, Crystal Armor, and Weapon Seeds the Blade of Seldor, which is the best in-slot slash weapon in the entire game, and the Young Youngleth Pet. But if the player is killed, they'll only get some petty loot. As you can see from the tables, the Corrupted Gauntlet has much better drop rates for all items. Because of this, I tend to recommend players only use the Normal Gauntlet to learn the mechanics of the minigame, and then camp the Corrupted Gauntlet when they're going for the Blade or Pet. So, when you enter the Gauntlet, you spawn in the start room with some tools, and your timer automatically starts. You have 10 minutes for the normal gauntlet and 7.5 minutes for the corrupted. This timer does not apply once you enter the boss room. In the start room, you'll find a singing bowl to create your armor, weapons, and other items, the range to cook your food, pump to fill vials, center tool supply if you ever drop a tool and need to replace it, and the exit. You also have a scepter equipped, which is used to open every room except the hunlifts. The objective during the prep stage is to collect resources and gear up for the hunlift fight. Throughout each room, you'll find resource nodes to harvest from. The crystal deposit is mined for ore, linum plants are picked for linum, and the friend roots are chopped for the bark. Each of these nodes has three total resources before being depleted, and these resources are used to make your armor. The grim roots can be picked for one grim leaf, which is then used to make agneal potions. Agneal potions have the combined effect of a prayer potion and a stamina potion. The grim leaves can also be dropped by monsters. Fishing spots can provide up to 4 paddlefish, and cooked paddlefish will heal you for 20 hit points. When harvesting any of these resources, you have a chance of receiving some crystal shards, which are needed to make items from the singing bowl. Throughout the rooms, you'll also encounter some monsters. The weak monsters are spiders, rats, and bats, and the strong monsters include unicorns, scorpions, and wolves. These monsters always drop crystal shards, and have a chance at dropping a weapon frame, paddlefish, grim leaf, and teleport crystal. On the outer ring, in these 12 designated rooms, you can find demi-bosses, which there are 6 of. They always drop crystal shards, a weapon frame, and a tier 3 weapon upgrade. The dragon attacks with magic and drops a crystal orb for the magic staff. The bear attacks with melee and drops a crystal spike for the halberd. And the dark beast attacks with range and drops a crystal and bowstring for the crystal bow. It's important to note that each demi-boss you kill will always drop a weapon attachment you have yet to receive. For example, you end up getting two dragons back to back. The second dragon has a 50-50 chance at dropping the spike or the bowstring. So then let's say you get the spike after the orb. The next demi boss you kill will always drop the bowstring. There's a lot to consider when prepping, so now I'll break it down to my recommendations on what gear and supplies to have ready for the Hunlith fight. I personally go for tier 1 armor for either version of the gauntlet. This requires 3 of each resource and 120 crystal shards. If you're struggling with the Hunla fight, you can offer tier 2 legs with tier 1 body and helm. This requires 1 extra of each resource and 60 more crystal shards. Getting other higher tier armor in the Corrupted Gauntlet is not recommended, as it can easily eat up your prep time. However, in the Normal Gauntlet, you always have plenty of time to get full tier 2 armor. A tier 3 bow, which is made with 80 crystal shards, a weapon frame, and the crystalline bowstring. A tier 3 staff, same as the bow, but with the crystal orb. I recommend this over the halberd for learners since you can continue attacking the Hunlift from anywhere in the boss room. We'll get into more detail on that later. 2-3 to three Agneal Potions. Each potion requires a Grimleaf, 10 Crystal Dust, which is made by using the Pestle and Mortar on 10 Crystal Shards, and a Vial, which is also made with 10 Crystal Shards at the Singing Bowl. 
The rest of your inventory should be cooked paddlefish. I suggest getting as many as you can at first. Then once you're comfortable with the boss fight, you can figure out a safe amount for you to go in with. I like to break my prep stage into two phases. For the first phase, make the loop shown here on the map. The goal is to get at least 100 shards and a weapon frame. For the weapon frame, skip over the strong monsters and just kill the weak monsters to save on time. Also, gather any resources you see along the way except for fishing spots, as we'll save these for the end. When you return, make a tier 2 bow and 2 vials. If you have enough shards and resources, you can also make some armor pieces. If not, drop any ore, bark, or linum next to the singing bowl. For phase 2, the goal is to get the second weapon frame, at least 230 shards if you didn't make any armor in phase 1, and any remaining resources, including fish. You will immediately run to the closest section of the outer ring where demibosses can spawn. You want to find the dragon and dark beast, but can choose to kill the bear if you're good on time. I'll usually just skip over it though. Run directly to the next set of demiboss spawns until you have the desired weapon attachments. While looking for the dragon and dark beast, go ahead and fish at any fishing spots you see, fill up your vials by using them on fishing nodes, and gather any remaining resources. Make two of your Agniol potions once you have the Grim Leaves and Crystal Dust. You may need to sip one dose of an Agniol potion to keep your run energy up. Once you have everything collected, use the Teleport Crystal to take you back to the start room. To finish prepping, make all your armor pieces, tier 3 weapons, and another vial for a third Agniol potion, which you can decant into two four doses. Now is the time to fish at those nearby fishing spots to top off your inventory. When you have all your fish, click once on the range and your character will automatically one tick cook the paddlefish. And now you should be ready to fight the Hunliff. Before I go over the boss fight, I wanted to give some time saving tips for the prep stage. When you're done collecting ore, bark, or fish, drop the respective tool to free up an inventory space. The same applies to the pestle and mortar once you have your crystal dust made. The bear can be safe spotted by standing outside of its room. And it's good to always have a teleport crystal whenever you venture out from the start room. They cost 50 crystal shards to make if you have already used the one you spawned with. Now for the final boss fight against the Hunliff. The Hunliff primarily attacks with range and mage. Sometimes the mage attack will disable your prayers and it will look like this. The Hunliff always starts out using range and switches to mage after 4 ranged attacks. Then after 4 mage attacks, switches back to range, and this cycle continues the entire fight. You can count them if you want, but the Hunliff has two distinct animations now to indicate when it is switching attack styles. Here's what it looks like when it's switching to mage. And here's what it looks like when it's switching to range. Having game sounds on can prove useful for this, because you'll likely end up in a situation where you can't look at the animation, but you'll still get that audio signal to swap overhead prayers. The Hunliff itself also uses overhead prayers. On every sixth attack by the player, the Hunliff will protect against that attack style, so you'll need to switch weapons as you cannot hit through its prayer. During the entire fight, varying sets of floor tiles will light up for a couple seconds, then change colors. When they change colors, it'll deal heavy damage every game tick the player is standing on them. Immediately run to a safe spot when you notice the tiles light up. Further into the fight, the damaging tiles will continually take up more space in the room, making it harder to navigate. The Hunliff will occasionally summon tornadoes as well, which is indicated by it stomping the ground. This counts as one attack in its four attack cycle. The tornadoes are very lethal and must be avoided. As the fight progresses, the tornadoes will increase in quantity. It's crucial to continue attacking the Hunliff here by kiting it. This is why I recommend learners start off with a staff over the halberd as it's easier to maintain DPS while dodging tornadoes and damaging floor tiles. You should also avoid running under the Hunliff. If you do, it could trample you which will deal very high damage. Note, this trampled is not included in the typical 4 attack cycle, so if you are counting attacks, just keep that in mind. If you use Runelight, you can use the NPC Indicators plugin to highlight the Hunliff's tile, making it much easier to see which tiles to not run to. You'll need to type in Crystalline Hunliff and Corrupted Hunliff for this to work properly. And here are a couple final tips for the Hunliff fight. Eat food when switching weapons or running from tornadoes to minimize lost game ticks, and always prioritize your overhead prayers as the Hunliff's max hit can exceed 50 when not using the correct prayer. Also, you can sip the Eggnail Potion at any time, it does not lose any game ticks. And that's going to do it for this guide. I hope you found this information helpful. 
I've linked a live commentary run of the Corrupted Gauntlet if you're interested to see how I work through an entire KC using the methods discussed in this video. If you have any questions, or if I got anything wrong, please let me know in the comment section. I also stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Fridays if you want to drop in there and ask a question. Link's in the description. One final remark. This boss is a steep learning curve, so don't get discouraged when you die. Just stay persistent and you'll be getting consistent kills in no time. Good luck and take care everyone.